I was the official combat artist for the Marine Corps from January of 2000 to the last day of 2009. I think we serve a function that is very important for morale, very important for public affairs mission, it's very important for um, a cultural bridging the gap in our culture too. Sometimes our culture we find isn't always unified and I think arts can bridge cultural gaps, cultural things that are you know disunity and you can be as an artist open up uh, an, an avenue of conversation with a part of our culture that may not like the military. A combat artist is uh, it's very simple on the surface. It's somebody, an artist, who goes to combat. You know, we know that there are artists who are known for being portrait artists, they do portraits. People who are landscape painters, landscape artists, and they do, they do landscapes. Um, those of us who have uh, borne the title combat artist or sometimes war artist um, are those who have uh, voluntarily gone to war to sketch, to record, to eventually do paintings, to do sculptures. Um, my orders were very simple. It goes back to World War II to the, uh, a gentleman by the name of Brigadier General Denig who started the Marine Corps Public Affairs Program. And he said to his artists very simply, go to war, do art. Every, every day is, is a new challenge. Every day is a new opportunity to capture something uh, that's happening on the ship, that's somehow advancing the story. And I have to say the access here uh, on the boat with the, with the Marines, with the, with the Navy personnel has been shockingly uh, open, you know, to just to sit, to, to be with them, to, uh, to, to draw uh, and follow their activities here. When you're seeing a piece of art that is made where the, where the artist sat down, took the time to draw the person or the, the activity, the gear, the environment of those young sailors and Marines, that says something to morale. It helps them, they feel more like they're part of something decent, like, wow, the Navy and the Marine Corps, they send artists. Wow, this is great. They care enough. There's just something very personable, valuing, um, and, and morale building in doing artwork. And there's also something very valuable in telling the story when you're talking about a painting or a, or a drawing. There's something very, um, there's something very heartfelt in an artwork. There's something very tactile and personal that a, can, that a photograph can do, but doesn't always do. I'm hopeful that throughout the Marine Corps, other units will take notice about what happened with the 24th Mew, you know, uh, on the Baton Arc. You know, I, I'm hopeful that other people, other units will take notice and they'll say, you know what? That whole combat artist thing with, you know, 24th Mew, I want some of that. So what I hope happens is we have other units reach out, you know, to myself and, and these artists and say, whatever you did with the 24th Mew, we, we want you to do that with us as, us, us as well. About 1% of uh, Americans who are involved in the armed forces, either directly or via family, there's a 99%, this is this other 99% situation, where the public is not aware, necessarily. They like to wave the flags, they like to thank a, a vet, maybe thank you for your service. Um, they like to do the big cheers at the, the, the stadiums, but do they, do they really know what's going on? And I, and I think people respond to seeing a drawing. Certainly the Marines and the Navy personnel, they, they see these drawings happening and they respond. Well, so, do, so do, does the average civilian. And I think this contributes in some small way what we're doing to bridging this, this, this understanding.